Y'all, the sheen package that I was waiting for arrived, so let's open it. Hello everyone, it is me Salem. Welcome back to my Chanel. As you guys can tell, I have cut off all my hair and I've dyed it and I officially got a new nose piercing. It's a little danger noodle. I recently went through a quarter life crisis, as you can tell, but I'm back and I'm feeling better than ever. Let's just jump into today's video because I have a feeling that it might be a little bit of a controversial one because this is a conversation that I have been seeing appearing a lot, a lot on social media. There's no excuse for fast fashion. Hold on a sec, I'm all about supporting ethical fashion, but some people have income limitations. But I also shouldn't shop fast fashion places like Forever 21 because they use child labor sweatshops. Cause it seems like everybody's thrifting, right? It seems like everybody's thrifting. Everybody's trying to be sustainable, but everybody loves to point fingers about who's not cool enough in what they're wearing and who's been wearing what for too long. Fast fashion on TikTok became a huge topic of conversation because of the sheen trend. And I know I'm a little late to the conversation about fast fashion and the whole sheen trend but honestly while it was happening i wanted to just wait and see what this conversation was going to look like in the future and i'm glad i did because now the aftermath of the sheen apocalypse is so real and the conversation surrounding fast fashion is very two-sided than ever do you guys remember that fiasco and how every single other video was people just doing huge hauls of sheen sheen is an international b2c fast fashion e-commerce company the company mainly focuses on women's wear but it also offers men apparel, children's clothes, accessories, all that stuff, right? But what makes this particular online shopping store so special? Their prices are really cheap. And on these shin trends on TikTok, people would buy loads and loads of clothing. And they would do try-ons, reviews, hauls. This trend quickly became a problem and eventually became a topic where people were calling it out. And in these videos where this trend was being called out, often were on the side of how fast fashion makes you kind of a bad person if you partake in it because you're destroying the environment and all of that, right? And then there were some clips that talked about how you don't know the person's situation and it's very privileged to assume that everyone can afford good clothing. So today's video is basically going to be a deep dive into both arguments, how the trend started, how it does affect our environment, but also how people are inherently bad for partaking in fast fashion. Basically, we are going to try to make this topic that is so black and white more of a gray area because the aftermath of the sheen apocalypse is here and we gotta talk about it. This is gonna be a long one, so sit back and relax, grab some tea, grab your favorite stuffed animal, and let's talk about this. But first, you guys know the drill. I gotta pay my bills. So here is a word from our sponsor, Filmora. Thank you to Filmora for sponsoring this video. A lot of you guys ask me what I use to edit my videos. For the longest time, I used editing softwares that just weren't cutting it. No, literally, like they would just crush my computer whenever I'd launch it. But thankfully, I found Filmora, which is so amazing and literally so easy to use. Filmora is an editing program that works for both Mac and Windows. All you gotta do to download this is to go on their website, press download, and install. And boom, Filmora is available at your fingertips. Filmora actually has a new feature. It's called the Enhanced Stock Library, which contains GIFs, stickers, and pictures from Giphy, Pixabay, and Unsplash. They also have AR stickers and AI portrait filters. 
Filmora's download link is down in the description below, and if you want to make your own videos, just do it! And comment down below what you like using Filmora for a chance to get your comment pinned. Alright, let's get into this. I feel like TikTok is the perfect platform for this to have happened. Let me explain a little bit deeper. TikTok is perfect for short-lived trends, especially ones that involve products. Every now and then there is a product on TikTok that goes viral, which then makes a lot of people want to buy it and then they end up being completely sold out. A few examples of this is the Magic Mascara, Cat Crack Catnip, EOS Shaving Cream, and so many more items that I've seen on TikTok that I also want to buy, but then they're completely sold out within the next hour. But this phenomenon is so like notorious on TikTok that there's even like hashtags dedicated to this trend, which is called TikTok made me buy it. Referring to this culture that this platform created, which is short, compelling product reviews that make other people want to buy it. I remember this one summer, I just wanted to learn to roller skate, and then I found out that roller skates was like a trend on TikTok, and I couldn't find any. People were buying these things faster than SpongeBob's Pretty Patties. And there's even different genres of the TikTok made me buy it trends. You know, sometimes it's a makeup product, skincare products, food, but very, very often, it's clothing. We've seen this with the lifting leggings, the Zara high rise wide leg seamless jeans, House of Sunny Hockney dress, Jan Andy dress. But obviously some of the items that I just, you know, listed, they're expensive. So even though they go viral and people buy it, they're not as popular as when cheap items go viral on TikTok. Which is why Shein was such a game changer for clothing hauls on TikTok. And these hauls got so popular that I saw people literally spend a hundred, two hundred, a thousand dollars on hauls. In general, Gen Z is a pretty high consumerist um, demographic. You know, we love to spend, we love to see other people spend their money on things that we could never afford. Hauls in general are just such a weird thing if you think about it. And if you're thinking, well, I'm not materialistic like that. Okay, well, the TikTok hashtag Sheen Hall has over 2.6 billion views, so someone's gotta be watching. Through these hashtags, you'll see basically like these conventionally wealthy, um, healthy, skinny white girls spending all this money on sheen clothing just to make it almost like a spectacle. There is this obsession and glamorization of fast fashion because of the overconsumption of it, and it literally is being glamorized currently by TikTok with these trends. But of course, it's not only TikTok, I mean, we see it all the time with Instagram influencers and people on YouTube where influencers show off their closets filled with so many clothes that it almost looks like a mini store because on social media um, people believe that it's like a flex that you are able to buy that amount of clothing. I blame the glamorization of overconsumption on how society treats influencers and celebrities because we already have this stigma where you can't outfit repeat as a normal human being even though you know washers exist well maybe not every celebrity owns a washer but in general people with platforms and people who are just famous in general are ashamed when they even repeat like shoes on the red carpet or earrings and everyone knows that if you're on the red carpet you never outfit repeat which pushes the narrative even further that if you want to be glamorous and if you want to be in fashion and not be like the fellow plebs around you you have to have a lot of clothes so that you're always in fashion you're always in style and you never, ever outfit repeat. 
fashion has always been looked at as a luxury. And all of these factors that I've been talking about, you know, the pressure to buy clothes, the not outfit repeating, how TikTok makes it go viral, the glamorization of overconsumption, all of these horrible factors are what make up the very first argument, which is that ultimately, if you give into fast fashion, not only are contributing to strengthening these points, but you're also being incredibly wasteful when the trends die out or when you're no longer in need of use of that item that you bought. What people have to understand is that fast fashion isn't made by machines many many times your clothing is made by hand and when you shop fast fashion it's unfortunately made by people who work in sweatshops and sometimes even has child labor going on behind the scenes and no that's not an exaggeration because the fast fashion industry requires low skilled labored workers so that they don't have to pay them properly imagine working 14 long hours just to make one piece just to see some random teenager on tiktok show it off for a 15 second clip and just to throw it out the very next day or even worse sell it so that they can make more money than you this is kind of like a different video that i could make but the whole depop situation needs to be talked about when it comes to fast fashion and how people get rid of their clothing very often people will bulk buy cheap items on these fast fashion websites and then sell it for double their price to make a profit on depop or online thrifting websites which really sucks because it does indirectly affect the thrifting market because it's making affordable attainable clothing unattainable and unaffordable which then makes those lower income families have to turn again to fast fashion it's just one big mountain of unwashed laundry and i'm about to air it the average american throws away over 81 pounds of clothing every year just to buy more clothing and with the trends of buying bulk things from these fast fashion stores I don't see this number ever really going down anytime soon and it's become a huge problem where people will donate it to goodwill vintage stores end up having nothing but just shein clothing which isn't even good quality which is a big problem with the first argument that we're talking about which is the anti-fast fashion argument where this fast fashion is just completely invading and will eventually destroy our ecosystem whether it's through someone who directly buys it or indirectly buys it through thrift stores very often these fast fashion items are made from materials that aren't very good such as polyester which is basically all plastic and it doesn't break down so when people throw it away it causes a bunch of microplastics to go into our ocean and soil but this is kind of where the second argument arises it's unfortunate that those who partake in fast fashion seem to be people who are privileged and the people who keep getting scapegoated are the people who can only afford buying one or two clothing items from fast fashion brands if people are buying this much clothing just to make hauls with them just to then almost like i don't know the proper terminology but basically just to screw over the people who are lower income when it comes to thrifting or buying stuff that they can't afford the cycle is almost forcing them to have to go back and turn to fast fashion in order to afford clothing you know vilifying fast fashion is in a way kind of privileged when we look at it like that As the Shein apocalypse came to an end, we saw how people were donating and throwing away their clothing items, and the conversation surrounding fast fashion became bigger than ever, and the criticisms against fast fashion were being widespread across TikTok. But the debate over the Shein apocalypse started to evolve, where people started to combat these arguments and criticisms, talking about how you're actually in a privileged spot if you're able to criticize those who can't afford sustainable fashion, or how the fast fashion problem is a rich people problem, and how people who fast fashion shame are truly the ones in the wrong. 
so let's talk about it not everyone can afford to give up the accessibility and the size and in inclusive um sizes and low prices that fast fashion brands have to offer and in a way it's extremely unproductive to demonize those who partake in fast fashion because it's shaming people who truly are in need and have no other options and very often these people who shop on the grounds of morals will try to make the argument of well why buy fake leather boots for $40 when you can just save up and make the investment of real authentic leather boots so that they last you even longer. While this is well intended, what if that person's $40 is the only amount that they can spend? In situations like these, convenience really does over trump morals. Very often people who criticize other people for giving into fast fashion are in positions where they have power. You know, they're rich, they're white, they're attractive, and they also don't understand that very often fashion brands don't accommodate to people who don't look like them. But the fashion industry makes it almost impossible for people who aren't rich and skinny and white to express themselves through fashion. The average range of sizes that most clothing stores carry is 8 through 12, despite the fact that the average woman here in the US is a size 14. And although most recent years, bigger brands such as Savage Fenty Beauty have allowed bigger bodied representation and bigger sizes to be included in their clothing, the truth is the majority of clothing brands just don't accommodate bigger than a size 12. However, the brands who do carry sizes that are bigger than a size 12 are fast fashion brands. It almost reminds me of the argument as to when like these rich white vegans try to talk down to black and brown people who have no access to organic food or have no access to healthy food where they live to just tell them to, you can easily cut out meat and it's even cheaper. It just doesn't include people's intersectionality or their situations. And of course the vegan argument and the fast fashion argument I feel all Always lies you know back into the root problem which is classism the truth is shopping sustainable does take a lot of money but not only does it take up a lot of money it also takes up a lot of time and guess what time and money is something that the underprivileged simply don't have sustainable shopping requires a lot of research but even then you'll always run into a problem I remember when I first started wanting to research into the sustainable fashion world I watched a lot of YouTube videos because they're easily accessible and they're quick and I trust the information there was this one certain YouTube video of this girl talking about how there is sustainable stores with super cheap prices and this girl deadass looked into the camera and said that her shirt that was sustainable was $30 and I thought that I was off kilter for thinking that that was a lot but thankfully everyone else in the comment section agreed your version of expensive isn't my version of expensive and what you consider cheap isn't what I consider cheap in a way it does genuinely like upset at me that these situations aren't really brought up when talking about fast fashion because just as there is a stigma where people can't outfit repeat there is this really dumb stigma where people of lower classes shouldn't be interested in fashion even though clothing has a huge importance in the opportunities you get in life and how people treat you to day-to-day -day basis a part of this is obviously yeah we live in a very extremely vain and shallow society but a big part of this is also that people who are outside of the Eurocentric beauty standard group. Very often POC have to almost modify how they look on the outside in order to be accepted in the inner group. I know for me growing up, I think any Hispanic, I think any Hispanic can relate that like your mom used to shop all the time at Ross and you would like straighten your hair and everything to fit in with like the white girls and stuff. I know I did it for a really long time and all my cousins did it because the truth is how you look does bring you power and acceptance. And the way our system works is that they try to keep people who are on the outside group um, basically to keep them there and this is something that's often ignored because people will be like um it's just a shirt it's not that deep but in reality it kind of is much deeper than just buying a shirt you know there's a reason why clothing styles are always changing and although one can say that it's to change clothing from summer to fall to me it's just another way where society tries to distinguish people of higher class and lower class distinguish people who can afford the latest trends versus the people who can't afford that stuff and then they get the label of wearing stuff that's outdated people who are in the position of shaming others for buying fast fashion make the argument that you could always just go thrifting but then whenever someone does go thrifting and makes an outfit that is considered outdated they're relentlessly dragged online and even bullied 
I just would like to point out that if you're going to pretend to care about fast fashion, then you need to stop critiquing what people are wearing now so much. Because critiquing what people are wearing now, saying it's not cool, saying they're lame for wearing this, that, the other thing, calling chuggy, incites fast fashion because it seems like everybody's thrifting right it seems like everybody's thrifting everybody's trying to be sustainable everybody hates fast fashion but everybody loves to point fingers about who's not cool enough in what they're wearing and who's been wearing what for too long pick something oh my god literally do not even get me on the whole chuggy thing i haven't heard people say it in a while but the mere fact that it was a thing at one point, and I'm still pretty sure some people still deadass use it unironically, it's literally rooted in classism and is literally just a fancy way to bully people for what they wear, especially people who can't afford the newest styles. Although this is a word that has to do with the aesthetic that's associated to the early 2010s and millennials, the whole point of the aesthetic and the word is to also describe things that are the opposite of trendy or trying to too hard which when you think about it is complete bs because everyone who's going to go thrift supposedly for cool items a lot of the clothes is outdated and has been donated by people years before so how are people supposed to thrift and shop sustainable if they're just going to be bullied by it if they get something that is outdated so what now you're chuggy if you can't buy the actual brand you're chuggy if you buy a knockoff version of something because you can't afford the real price of the real item because it's so damn expensive an example of this is when miss Guided posted a picture of a replica Kim K dress on their Instagram and the dress was way cheaper more affordable to the one that Kim wore they got criticism for making it a cheap knockoff or for it looking tacky which I mean I really think those are just code words for saying mm, you can't afford the real thing sucks to be you to me it's such an outdated way of thinking like people in the middle class and lower classes should be able to feel good about themselves and express themselves through fashion still i feel like gen z has created this atmosphere where expressing yourself is incredibly important whether it's through you know your makeup your hair your clothing it's very popular right now i see people choosing different aesthetics like it's pretty cool to see but teenagers who are in situations where they're less fortunate shouldn't be demonized for wanting to join that too it reminds me of this other topic that i personally don't like talking about because it kind of gets me angry is um lowering your carbon footprint and how basically everyone has to contribute to lowering their footprint which which isn't a bad thing that's not what i'm mad but it annoys me that average everyday people who are in positions who just can't afford or have the privilege to do sustainable everyday things are often scapegoated look the truth is the majority of the people in the one percent can solve the majority of our problems when it comes to pollution when it comes to hunger but somehow in some sort of way poc plus size people people in lower class are almost always scapegoated and gaslit to believing that it's all their fault and that they need to do better which yeah we can all do better but i think that there's something just very wrong about both sides of this debate we're spending so much time tearing down one another when in reality it's the fault of the brands themselves these brands are not respectful towards their workers they don't use the proper materials that they need to be using and yeah that is the whole point of fast fashion but that isn't necessarily the consumer's fault i just think that we spend Spend a lot of time holding each other accountable for something that is out of our control we should literally be holding these brands accountable it's such a hard thing to talk about because under a capitalist society there is no true ethical consumption and under a capitalist society it thrives off scapegoating underprivileged people because it all has to do with exploitation i mean even so-called ethical brands aren't even ethical it's kind of like how dove a company all about how women should love themselves is also owned by the same company that owns Axe, a company that has historically been very sexist, both owned by Unilever. So when implementing the fast fashion argument into this situation, one could argue that if you buy Dove, you support sexism because you're also supporting acts. Ethical consumerism ends up dividing the working class by implying that those who purchase ethically are more morally superior than those who just can't afford to. It's almost like a competition to see who can be better than one another. Our clothes and where we buy them now have become this 
class issue and now more than ever they're starting to get mixed up with our ideologies so if you do partake in fast fashion you're essentially telling the world my priorities are bigger than people's small businesses and then when you do buy ethically then you scream i'm far more principled than you so honestly at this point there is no winning told you this topic would be a lot more gray than black and white So now that we got all that mess covered, I think it's time to finally talk about the gray area that I've been talking about throughout this video. We know that fast fashion is indeed damaging to the environment and can even encourage people to become over consumeristic, but we also know that a lot of people don't have the options to not contribute to these factors. And even when we do want to shop sustainable, sometimes these brands are just greenwashed. So either way, if you do, you're still contributing somehow to waste, whether it's literal clothing or morally. And even when people want to shop on the basis of sustainability and thrift, sometimes people get made fun of for not being able to be in fashion, which then pressures people to go back to fast fashion in order to avoid this. And of course, every single one of us needs to do our very best, you know, the very best that we can to help contribute to saving the planet. But I don't think that that responsibility, which is a pretty big one, should be put on the shoulders of consumers alone. People shouldn't be quick to judge of those who buy fast fashion. Brands have to be aware that what they're making does does impact you know the environment of course there is you know this side of it that is if you don't buy a company's product then eventually they will go out of business and that's one way that we can all contribute to the stopping of so much waste however this is a position in which people who are at a disadvantage need these brands in order to close themselves and in those situations i just don't think making these accessible brands disappear is a good idea if anything pressuring the brands to try to be more sustainable and affordable is the best way to go about this. It's kind of like how if Kim K just made her line more affordable, then fast fashion brands wouldn't have to make cheap knockoffs. I think that people aren't understanding that big corporations and celebrities have a lot more power and say in what they do and sell. It's just the fact that they don't want to be sustainable. They don't want the lower class to afford their products and it really sucks. But you know, there are ways that we can all contribute to being a little bit more sustainable. And obviously one of the biggest ones is to thrift your clothing. I know that right now because of the amount of problems people are having with like donating a bunch of clothing, whole Depop thing, there's a lot of thrift stores that are now super expensive and not gonna lie one of them is goodwill like goodwill really thinks that they're the gucci of thrift stores but better alternatives to places like this that are actually still very affordable is like salvation army value village which is my fave and if you want to thrift online uh, i hate to say this but try to avoid places like poshmark or depop because very often people will bulk buy items and then resell them for a profit that is way out of range of the original price some good online thrift stores that i've used before and are pretty good are thread up which is probably the best out of this list and good twice restitch swap and ragstock second is to actually rent your clothing when you want to go to an event very often people will buy clothes clothing and then just have it in their closet for years and never wear it again but if you have like a photo shoot or like picture day at school or whatever it's really convenient to just rent your clothing and then give it back so that someone else can use it instead of buying an item that you're never going to use again me and my sister actually do this all the time and i've done it for events before and it's just more convenient too my favorite is rent the runway where you can rent dresses and just formal wear for events and of course it is a little bit spendy but this is also considering the fact that we have to contribute to not wasting as much clothes so investing in a one-time garment and giving it back rather than spending a bunch of money on a garment that you'll never use again and then the third option is to do a closet swap you can do it with a friend you can do it with someone online you can do it with your siblings there's really no like limit with a closet 
closet swap but the reason why closet swaps are so cool is because you're trading one item for someone else's item rather than donating it or throwing it away there aren't really any rules when it comes to closet swaps because it really is just agreed upon both parties who are participating in the closet swap so like i said you can do it with like a friend a cousin basically anyone that you're willing to trade with but if you want to do it online there are options for that too a really good website for this is swap society though there are just some options that i wanted to share with you guys my opinion overall on this situation i am a person that's pretty passionate about thrifting so I, i've been wanting to talk about this topic for a while i know for me um i the majority of my clothing is thrifted i don't usually shop fast fashion but I'm not going to shame those who do partake in it in general because growing up, I was lower class and I had to do that in order to fit in and not be scrutinized by other people. So I understand that and I'm not going to go out of my way to pressure people to buy sustainable when they don't have the resources to do so. But I also don't think that it's right that people are spending thousands of dollars on sheen hauls and literally throwing everything away and not even using any of the items. I think it's very extreme and it's so unnecessary and almost again scapegoats the people who do actually shop at fast fashion brands because they can't afford anything else and then you have these freaking people on tiktok spending two thousand dollars and being like it's because not everyone can afford that girl bye afuera so yeah i think that's it for today's video i mostly made this video because i really want to see what you guys say i want to know what you think what is your opinion on fast fashion do you shop fast fashion why or why not do you shop sustainable why or why not after watching this video has your opinion changed at all or has it stayed the same i really want to know follow me on my instagram i also make music so follow me on there remember to like and subscribe and if you made it to the end of the video comment a duck emoji down in the comments below but most importantly i want you guys to do something that you love today go watch squid game because it was actually really good or just go take a nap i know after this i need to drink a bunch of water because i have just been drinking my own saliva because i've been talking so much without a break but yeah i hope you guys have a lovely day and i will see you guys in the next video bye